If you don't shave down your eyebrow like that, looking like a pelican, <laughs> looking like Anthony Davis, get that out of here. Yo, what's up, guys? Prince Charming. Today we're gonna be checking out insane cartoon conspiracy theories that could be true. So a lot of kid cartoon shows that we watch are actually connected and they're tied together and they have dark secrets that we don't know about. And a lot of people have debunked these secrets, have like pretty much looked deep inside to try to figure out what they're really talking about, what they really mean. So we're gonna be showing you what these conspiracy theories mean and if they could actually be true or if they're just myths. So make sure you hit me with that follow on you. Now I do streams where I call you guys. I do gaming, vlogs, everything. So make sure you follow me at Prince of Hawkins, link in the description below. Also, can your boy get a like on this video? Can you go ahead and hit that thumbs up button right now? Click it for me and give me a thumbs up on this video. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn your post notifications on so you never miss one of my perfect, beautiful video. And go ahead and comment a cartoon conspiracy theory that you know. Cartoon conspiracy that I know is that uh, Angelica from the Rugrats, she's actually crazy and she actually has no baby friends. She just creates it all, it's all in her imagination. She's hallucinating and whatnot. It actually gets pretty convoluted. It's actually pretty like detailed and specific so you should guys check it out but enough of me talking enough of me talking let's check out these insane kid cartoon conspiracy theories that could be true hope you guys enjoy the video number 10 the fairly odd parents this nickelodeon cartoon is about the adventures of timmy turner who is granted two fairly odd parents named cosmo and wanda the reason why he has fairies is because of his miserable life in the show <laughs> his parents are constantly ignoring him his classmates bully him and his babysitter tortures him. But yeah, fairies, he come his on. Life to get better because he has an endless amount of wishes, but it never does. Some people believe that his fairies are metaphors for antidepressants. They're supposed to help him oh. struggles. Also, whenever Timmy oh. uses their magic, there's always a serious side effect. Another theory is that Mr. Crocker has been sexually abusing Timmy for years. This is why Mr. Crocker is always trying to steal his fairies, which actually represent Timmy's innocence, hope, and joy. I mean, Timmy Turner, Timmy, Tim, Timmy Turner, hey, he be wishing for a burn, hey, to kill everybody walking. No, but seriously, he had fairies. What can, what more can you wish for? Unlimited magic to do whatever you want with. And he always ended up wishing for something stupid. Like, I remember when he wished for a world without electricity, and it took him back in, like, the Flintstone time. Who would wish for that? Just wish for superpowers and be on your way. Number nine, Batman the Animated Series. This theory will make you never look at the show the same way again. After tragically losing his parents, Bruce's life was forever changed. Damn. The villains he fight do not actually exist. He is just having a battle with his inner demons. Each villain For in the 30 show years? represents something different. <laughs> two Face symbolizes his two different personalities. During the day, he's Bruce Wayne, the billionaire playboy. With During the night, chin. he's Batman, the vigilante who fights crime. Mr. Freeze represents how he can never maintain long-term relationships because he's always pushing people away from him. He knows that the people close to him always end up getting hurt. Because Batman writes solo. The Joker's main purpose is to show us all the insane thoughts Bruce has. You don't need this help. This probably isn't true, but it's interesting to see how most of the villains have at least one thing in common with Batman. My boy Batman had no superpowers, but he was still in the Justice League. He was still serving them dubs, serving them L's to everybody who needed an L. And he had one of the best, like, villain database ever. Like, come on, Joker? <laughs> Joker is the best villain ever. As far as this conspiracy theory, I'm gonna go ahead and say that isn't true because there's a lot of villains that have nothing to do with Batman. Like, come on, the Riddler? Batman doesn't trivia people. <laughs> the Riddle is one of the most dumbest villains I've ever seen in my life. Like, you really riddle people. That's your power. You riddle people. You're lame. You're a teacher. Number 8, Hey Arnold. The writers led us to believe that this show is about Arnold's life. But what if we're seeing this the wrong a kill. way? Maybe Hey Arnold was actually meant to be about Helga. This makes sense because she's the only character that ever gets monologues and the title of the show is a quote directly from Helga. Her long speeches make it seem as if the story is being told from her perspective. Okay, so hey, the show spends so much time hey, focusing on her personal issues and struggles. Her mother is an alcoholic. Her father doesn't really care about her, and her family expects her to be as successful as her older sister. Aww. Also, she has a huge crush on Arnold, but can never admit it. She pretends she hates him, even though she's in love with him. For a character who isn't supposed to if be you main, like so 
We sure do know a lot about her. That, I don't understand it, Helga. Hey, Helga, you know, if you like somebody, act nice to them. You know, maybe bullying them and making fun of them isn't the way to get to their heart. And I hope, hey, Arnold didn't end up with you. I hope, I hope Arnold didn't end up with you. I hope he realized you're, you're scum and you don't deserve any good. Nah, I'm playing with you, but come on. If you don't shave down your eyebrow like that, looking like a pelican, <laughs> looking like Anthony Davis, get that out of here. Number seven, Tom and Jerry. This theory is literally going to ruin your childhood. Most what they people do. are growing up loving Tom and Jerry, not knowing that the show is filled with Nazi propaganda. Wow. This theory does make a lot of sense because the show came out in the 1940s, which is a year after the war started. Okay. It's not a coincidence that Tommy's were British soldiers and Jerry's were Germans in World War II. The worst part about this theory is that Jerry is the good guy and the innocent character in the show while Tom is portrayed as the villain. Even though Tom is much stronger than Jerry, he never wins. Since Jerry is very intelligent, he uses different strategies, which is how he ends Jerry up Jerry a bully though! Everyone should hope that this theory isn't true because if it is, Tom just wants some then cat. that would mean that these writers are Nazi supporters. Man, what is up with Nazis in today's world, man? Like, I don't understand it. Why would you want to be a part of that hate group? No, but let me make this video more more friendly, more happy. Tom was the cat, right? It, Tom was the cat, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm saying, Tom was the cat. Jerry was, yes, I know Tom was trying to eat Jerry or whatnot, but come on guys. Jerry did some convoluted plans and plots to destroy Tom. Like a lot of things could have pretty much killed Tom. So really Jerry can go to jail for manslaughter in the very least. Cause that's not, you're defending yourself at some point. Cause Jerry was started at like half the time, Jerry will be one starting this beef. Tom will be, be relaxed and chilling and Jerry will stop the start the beef number six the magic school bus this theory will blow your mind for this cartoon she a drunk driver two very unbelievable theories the first one is that miss frizzle is a teacher of a special education class <gasps> oh gosh explain why the class only has eight students and why they're always going on a field trip yeah all of the ventures they go on are probably just in their imagination the second yeah. theory is that the magic school bus kids grew up to be on captain planet what if these two shows share the same universe? <laughs> it's the only Is explanation this for real? why each child in the Magic School Bus resembles one of the protagonists from Captain Planet. This theory states that Gaia this is kidnapped so real. the children and brainwashed them into becoming protectors of the Earth. The main problem with this is that Captain Planet came out first. So if Captain Planet came out first, how do you expect the Magic School Bus kids to be the kid version of them? Unless they have like a secret, super secret back plot story that the writers got together and decided to make because they really do resemble each character off of the other show or whatnot but come on captain planet or yeah that's stupid <laughs> why would you want to grow up and defend earth earth is throwing hurricanes like irma Ir <laughs> irma jose harvey come on who wants to defend that number five pinky in the brain is pinky the actual genius in the group some people believe that pinky may in fact be the genius and Brain might be the insane one. Here are the supporting facts behind this theory. First of all, the intro theme says one is a genius, the other one's insane, but it doesn't identify who's who. More often than not, okay. each features the Brain creating a plan in order to rule the world. So Brain is Pinky the insane having one. legitimate input, Brain brushing Pinky off, and the plan going terribly wrong because Brain doesn't listen to Pinky's advice in advance. Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember the episode where Brain goes on a game show and loses on a question that Pinky had the answer to? After that, we also learn that Pinky can read and Brain is hardly capable of writing his name. Another interesting episode so Brain is stupid. enough evidence to prove to us that Pinky is the genius where Brain- Pinky, you need to go solo. What causes his plans to fail. The machine primarily faults Pinky. So Brain constructs a machine that makes Pinky into a genius, yet his personality doesn't appear to change at all. Pinky then points out that Brain had a mistake in his previous calculations and he's the one to blame for his failed schemes. I never watched that show ever in my life, but it seems like Pinky, I will believe this conspiracy theory, it seems like Pinky really is the smarter one. Because if the intro really goes, one is smart, the other is insane, clearly Brain's the insane one, like do y'all see this dude? He looks like an 80 year old man, he's clearly insane. <laughs> he's over here wanting to rule the world, why would you want to rule the world? What has the world done to you? That's why I don't understand bad villains, they always want to take over and conquer the world. Can't you just be okay with what you have? Why you gotta conquer the entire world? Number four, the Rugrats theory. This is probably oh, here we go. a common unsettling theory. Here we go. World, but it's worthy mentioned because it's just that crazy. Here's the overall gist of the theory. 
The babies are just an illusion of Angelica's crazy yep. imagination. Mm -hmm. The Develles had an abortion, and Angelica couldn't oh, decide gosh. if it was going to be a boy or girl, so she went with twins. Chucky died along with his mother, which explains the overly worried mess of a grown man that his father, Chaz, always is. Then, there's Tommy. People believe Tommy was a stillborn, which explains why his dad keeps building toys in his basement. They're all for the dead son who never lived to play them. Oh. And Susie was apparently Angelica's only real life friend, and she yeah. went along with the outrageous fantasies for Angelica's yeah. sake. Yeah, yeah, cause Susie too real, real. Like, come on, she she's the black OG. Oh, she too real to be fake. <laughs> Angelica was low key really bonkers because she was really running kids like she was a pimp or something. Not like a pimp, but like she was like a gang leader or something. She she was running baby, and they couldn't back talk to her because she would just push them and bully them. Hell yeah, Angelica, run it, run that gang. Yeah, throw them gang signs. Up. <laughs> I don't know about throwing up. No, but seriously, Angelica, <laughs> I hope you're not crazy because Rugrats was a good show. Number three, Mr. Dink. This theory Mr. is Mr. Dink. Doug's neighbor, Mr. Dink was a child predator who was on the lookout for Doug, which is the reason why Doug had to take LSD that he stole from his sister's room, Judy, as a coping mechanism. Here's the imagination stretching evidence to back those allegations. Why are you Mr. purple? Dink always attempts to invite Doug into his house and show him some very expensive Why are you gadget. Even in the first episode when they met, Mr. Dink demanded Doug into coming over in order to watch a video. Also, there's a point oh, you're in the creepy, show where dude. Dink offers Doug a chance to work in his forcefully secured shed. Mr. Dink has no children, but is the leader of Doug's bluff scout, True. There is an episode where Doug, Skeeter, and Mr. Dink get lost while canoeing. Oh Dink God! Says he's going to search for camp, and when Doug and Skeeter go after him, they find him butt naked in a tree, claiming to lose his pants. Oh yeah, you're a creep. You're a creep. While in the wilderness with two 11-year-old boys. That's kind of weird, mm -hmm. guys. He wanted booty. His sister Judy never he wanted, wanted Doug in her room. It's a strongly enforced rule. And in an episode where Doug went through Judy's belongings, she's extremely annoyed. Why? Because obviously she's got a ton of LSD in there. She got that she stun of shame. Finding and or mooching on her stash. The LSD explains all of Doug's delusions. Also, there was an episode where Doug is home alone and sneaks into Judy's room and later, while in the basement, begins hallucinating. Yeah. This cartoon yeah, you on drugs, dude. But it's still fun and interesting to look at. You're crazy. Angles. Another show I haven't watched, Doug. I have not watched that show. Why are people purple in that show? And why is his like alter reality person? Is it, is it gray or purple too or blue? What what is that show? Why is Mr. Dink taking two 11 year old year old boys out to the forest and then taking his pants off and climbing in a tree? So many answers I need in this show before I even dare to even look it up to watch it. Doug, why do you look like Caillou? That's another question I have. Now let me get off my boy Doug. <laughs> he has that Lois Griffin nose. <laughs> Number 2, Toy Story 3. According to film critic Jordan Hoffman, Toy Story 3 is totally about the Holocaust. The Holocaust no way. about the Toy Story really caught the attention of the millions of people on the internet because of the surprising number of parallels between the lighthearted story about talking toys and one of humanity's greatest tragedies. This story starts when the Jewish oh, people gosh. represented by the toys are left behind by their host nations at the onset of World War II, which is represented by Andy going off to college. At this point, the toys leader Woody recommends to hide in the attic, kind of like Aunt Frank style. Oh man! They quickly get caught and shipped off to Sunnyside Daycare, you know, a place where the Jews were sent, kind of like the concentration camps, <laughs> and mistreated this by is, the little this children, is Nazi. which are closely related to the Nazis. The abusive toys who lived in Sunnyside are the version of the Jewish police who helped push their fellow Jews into trains for Auschwitz. Because of them, the main characters That's end up messed in a up. belt headed straight for the oven. There was even a sad scene where the toys grab hands and accept their fate. And then, of course, they get saved by toy aliens, who obviously stand for the line. Yes! The characters eventually relocate to a new place where many of their kind already live and have an established foothold. Okay, I, I can get behind this conspiracy theory because there's too many connections that they just hit right there. There's too many connections. The fact is, like, many people would have not realized this, especially if you're not good with uh, history or whatnot. But now that you point out the Holocaust and the many similarities, I can get behind this conspiracy theory. I'll give this being true or at least it was kind of based that way the plot of the movie can seem like oh it's so like it's hitting you deep because you don't realize it's talking about the holocaust but in like toy perspective wow disney or pixar you you really got you got a good idea there. you got a good idea there number one the pokemon theory have you ever wondered that the pacing 
tone and story progression of Pokemon changes after Ash is hit by lightning in the early episodes. Did he die? How Ash and his world are relatively normal until after the incident. So here's a theory behind this famous cartoon. It is believed that the accident with his bike put Ash into a coma. Days later after the accident, Ash was found barely alive on the floor and was quickly rushed to the hospital and treated with heavy doses of medication. Did the you medication survive? took effect and stabilized his coma dreams. The drugs allowed him to live out his Pokemon Master fantasies. The coma and fantasy explains why his body never really changes throughout the course of the wow. show. It also explains the universal socialism as he created up a safe government structure that would run smoothly and keep the world going, allowing his journeys to continue. So they're saying that Pokemon, his Pokemon Master journey was a whole illusion but pokemon are still real as long as pokemon are still real i'm okay with that i'm cool with it as far as that conspiracy theory goes i'm gonna go ahead and say no i don't think that will be too true i'm gonna go ahead and say that's not really true that was it for this video guys and i hope you enjoyed it so those were some insane cartoon conspiracy theories that could be true could not be true i think some of them were true some of them were just too far-fetched for me but don't forget to like subscribe and comment on this video if you want to reply from yours truly prince charming my name is Prince Holcomb, and stay charming, my friends. Yeah, yeah.